Hi, my name's Dallin, and I'm a Boy Scout with Troop 745 in Lincoln, and I'm working on my Eagle Scout project. So for my project, we will be working with Friends of Auburn Ravine to do a salmon carcass survey. So some things we'll be measuring and uh, information we'll be collecting is we'll be measuring the salmon's fork length, uh, if it's male or female, and we'll be collecting a tissue sample from its heart. I'm Brad Cavallo, a principal scientist with Kramer Fish Sciences, and I'm here today to talk uh, a bit about how we can go about collecting the data that we need uh, from our salmon carcass surveys, make sure that we get the right information collected in the right way so that we get the best possible uh, use of, the, of our time out here in the field. Okay, so we're in the stream, we're doing our carcass survey. Now, carcasses can end up just about anywhere in the stream, so there really aren't any areas that you can skip um, right now we're standing in a pool. This is not a place where salmon are going to spawn, so you don't need to worry about walking on their nests, their reds. Um, but this is an area that we want to look for carcasses. Uh, sometimes as the fish are dying, they'll swim off and kind of nose up into a little pocket back there. So we want to be walking along, looking for any large dead fish. And if we see one, we go over there and get it, and we do the rest of it. Now I'm going to walk upstream here a little bit and talk about what a red looks like so that we can be sure to avoid walking on those because we certainly don't want to be stomping on uh, any of the eggs that are in the gravel. So this is an area, this is a riffle, and this is the kind of spot where you might encounter a salmon red. And what you want to look for is a clean spot in the gravel that's maybe about this big. It looked like a little pocket. There might be a pile behind it. Um, if you see something like that, just walk around it. Just avoid it. Don't step on it. Want to make sure the, the uh, eggs in there are not damaged by our waiting. Okay, so you're out on the creek, you're doing your carcass survey, you come upon a salmon. The first thing you need to do is look to see if it has an adipose fin or not. This salmon here has an adipose fin. You can see it here. This is a male, you can tell by the, the large hooked jaw. Um, now at the hatchery, if, if, this is a, if, there are, if it is a hatchery fish, 25% uh, of the hatchery origin salmon receive a clip of this fin and they receive a coat of wire tag in their head. So the fact that this fish has an adipose fin tells you that you don't need to sample it to collect a head sample for a coat of wire tag. Now, we have a fish here that does not have an adipose fin clip. And the head's already been removed, you can ignore that. But you can see in, in this fish, that fleshy lobe is missing. And if you look closely, you can see there's a little bit of scar tissue there. So this adipose fin was clipped off in the hatchery when this fish was a baby before it was released. And that tells us that in its head, there's a coat of wire tag that we need to recover. So that's the difference between adipose fin and no adipose fin. So this is a male salmon. You can see with the hooked jaw here from the top and from the bottom. Um, kind of a different head shape than the female salmon will have. For demonstration purposes, we're going to pretend this one has an adipose fin clip and therefore has a head that we need to collect because it has a coat of wire tag buried in it. So I'm going to show you how we do that. This is probably one of the, this is potentially um, dangerous. You could cut yourself with this. So be extremely careful with this part of the operation. So you want to be working in the soft part of the salmon body, sort of behind the head. What I like to do is pinch the fish between my feet a little bit, and then you can just come in straight in from the top here, make an incision, and just kind of a sawing motion. You have to get through that back all the way down. It takes a little bit of muscle. All the way through. Again, be very careful. Almost through. One last cut here. There we go. So we've got our head. There's a coat of wire tag in there somewhere, but we don't know exactly where. So we're going to take the whole thing. We put a head tag, which is a little piece of paper that says the date and where we collected it, the sex of the fish, the length of the fish. Put that in a plastic bag, and then you get to carry this heavy thing all the way off the stream and take it back to the appropriate pro folks at uh, Calfish and Wildlife.
Okay, so we found a salmon and we want to collect a tissue sample from it for genetic analysis. Now because these are salmon carcasses and not fresh fish, we have to be concerned about getting a sample that is going to have good DNA in it. If we take a sample from a fin that's eroded and old, we may not be able to extract a good DNA sample from it. So for all the carcasses that we encounter, we are going to go straight to the heart. The heart is the, uh, the last part of the tissue to decay after the salmon dies, and so it gives us the best chance of getting a good DNA sample. So the easiest way to the heart, turn the salmon up like this, heart's gonna be right down in here. So we're just gonna cut in, slimy burger. This isn't a sushi, a sushi chef operation here, so it doesn't need to be a pretty cut. I want to get in there and open this cavity up so we can find that heart. And there it is. Popping right out at us there. So, we want to get a sample from that. Get a little bit of the blood off my hands here. 